<laughs> Holy shit. Hi everybody and welcome back to the show. So today we're going to be doing part two of this here water cooler or ice chest air conditioner. So last Saturday was my little brother's birthday, his 30th birthday. We celebrated his birthday next to a campfire down in West Virginia at my aunt's house. It was a great time, really enjoyed it. And happy birthday, bro. So we actually got to use the ice chest cooler for a little bit. Found out that yes, the fan is noisy and it's definitely kind of annoying. Uh, but we also found out some other things. One, the ice, I bought two bags of ice and put it in here. That lasted approximately two hours, maybe a little bit less like till it was all gone. The other thing I found out is that as the ice melts, this cooler doesn't have a drain in it, so the water just pulls up in the bottom. And as the water pulls up so far, it starts blocking the air inlets, which then it just stops working. Another thing that I noticed is that after running for a while, all our metal pieces here, even the fan actually, started condensing. Now that's really not that big of an issue, but if it's condensing, that means there's an exchange of heat. That's heat that can be blowing on you. Now this may be minuscule in the amount of performance you're actually going to get out of it. But what we're going to do today will only magnify that issue. So we're going to fix a couple of these problems. Oh, another thing I noticed is the grate that I used in here, the metal grating I used to hold the ice off the floor. I used just plain steel, expanded metal. Well, now that's rusting. So, for future reference, if you guys want to do this, then I would recommend finding either a plastic grate or an aluminum uh, mesh that'll work in there, and that won't rust on you. Me, I don't care. I have future plans for this thing where we're going to be modifying it even further, and we'll see how that goes. So the exciting part of today's episode So I was talking to a good friend of mine and I was telling him about the ice chest air conditioner and he mentioned an idea that he was going to build for an outdoor air conditioner style system and he mentioned that he's going to use dry ice for his and I said Oh man, that's an awesome idea. So I went ahead and picked up <laughs> some dry ice. So we're actually going to put some dry ice in this thing today and see how that performs. Now dry ice sits at about negative 109 degrees. That's a hell of a lot colder than the 32 degrees that normal ice sits at. So what I'm hoping we accomplish here is that the dry ice is just going to make this thing perform significantly better. Hence, making sure we do something about the condensation on these metal parts. Because if it condensed with the ice in there, it's definitely going to make a lot of moisture with the dry ice. At least that's what I'm predicting. So let's go ahead and get started fixing some of these issues. We'll start off by insulating the metal parts. Now, when I was buying the parts to build this in the first place, I had actually picked up some insulation tape in order to insulate these parts right from the beginning. And frankly, I was just too lazy to do so at first because I wasn't sure if it would actually be necessary. But now that we know that it is definitely going to condense and create moisture and exchange heat across those parts, we're definitely going to do that now. So let's get started. Insulating a pipe with insulation tape is actually pretty darn easy. You simply peel the roll off and it's just like any other tape. You're just going to wrap it around the part until you're completely covered. If we have enough tape, we might actually do it twice. So let's go ahead and get this done. Now we have that insulated. That takes care of one of our problems. At least hopefully it takes care of one of our problems. Now I used almost the whole roll doing this. I went over it twice because whilst insulation tape may be easier to apply and install and use, it is not as effective as using say half inch insulation or even one inch, one inch insulation. I can't even talk. 
I guess that's about normal these days. Hopefully now that will keep, like I said, it's a minuscule amount of heat, probably not even measurable, but hopefully this will now keep whatever heat is in the pipe in the pipe and not exchange it outside of the pipe. But more importantly, hopefully it will keep the pipe from condensing and just dripping everywhere. The one thing I definitely don't want to happen is for water to get mixed in with the motor here. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I don't want it to happen. The other thing uh, that we wanted to address is the water building up. In order to address that, what I would do is actually just drill a hole and put a drain in the, in the thing. I'm not gonna do that right now. If I wanna continue using this as an ice chest cooler, then I would definitely do that. Uh, that way it gives the water a place to drain out and not build up. We don't want the water to build up. But today, we're gonna to be putting dry ice in here. Now dry ice does a unique thing. When it melts, you don't see any liquid. So the neat science behind that, it's called sublimation. Sublimation is when something changes states twice at the same time. So in other words, it goes from a solid to a liquid to a gas at the same time. So because dry ice sublimates and doesn't just melt to a liquid, then there's no liquid to build up. And since we're moving so much air through here, then it's not going to pull up the CO2 either. It's going to keep blowing it out. As I bring that up, I feel I must also say, I don't recommend you guys do this. I definitely don't recommend doing it in a closed room. If all you're looking to do is say air condition, provide like air conditioning for your vehicle, like when it's off or like a camper or even a tent or a room, do not use dry ice. Dry ice is made of CO2, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide displaces oxygen. So if you're in a closed room, as the dry ice sublimates, then you're putting CO2 in that room. So, you know, put it together and you could, like, it's not good. So I don't recommend doing this in a closed space. I don't recommend playing with the dry ice unless you actually are sure you know what you're doing, period. Uh, God forbid somebody do something stupid and you end up going to the hospital or worse yet dying because you suffocated because you had a room full of CO2. Well, there's an idea. Just put CO2 detectors in your room. No, just don't use it in a closed space. Yeah. All right. All right. So now we're going to put the dry ice in here and then we're going to give it a test go round and see how it works. Now I'd like to say this, I would normally be doing this outside, but it's been raining so much, I would need a boat. So we're going to do it in here instead. Now I want to explain one thing before I do this. I mentioned in the last video that we had a 30 degree delta T. Now we're going to use that measurement or that statistic to compare the results to today, because obviously it's not Although it feels like it, obviously it's not 80 degrees in my studio, so the readings will be a little different. But the delta T, what that means is, delta T basically says the amount of temperature difference between ingoing to outgoing. So it may be going in at 80 degrees and it comes out at 50 degrees, that's 30 degrees difference, that's a 30 degree delta T. That delta T is what makes the difference here. So even though we don't have as high a temperature going in because we're not outside, we can still compare the delta T's to see which one's actually doing better or see how much better the CO2 actually does. So that being said, let's go ahead and start putting the ice in. <laughs> Look at this. It's already starting to spill over. <laughs> so I picked up 25 pounds of dry ice. Turns out that's actually quite a lot of dry ice. The dry ice costs about a dollar a pound. So about 25 bucks worth of dry ice. Now this is more expensive than regular ice, but it's also a hell of a lot cooler. Pun intended. Again, I'm using my battery pack to drive the fan just because it's a lot more convenient for me at this time. So let's see how this thing works. Mm. 
Yeah, it works. Holy shit. So as you can see, we're blowing cold. I'm talking really cold. We're blowing negative 32 degrees. To be fair, I think we can get colder, but the motor started slowing down and like acting like bogging down by the time I ended that test. I ended the test because the motor was bogging down. And now this thing's making like cracking noises in there. <laughs> But I got to looking, if you look inside, the motor's freezing up. Like it's, it's like a block of ice inside the motor, inside the blower. This is nuts. I mean, look at this. It's, look, it starts dumping out there. This is crazy. This is awesome. I love it. So here's what's happening, in case you're wondering. All the white that you're seeing is actually the moisture in the air condensed. So this is literally a cloud. Like I'm blowing, I turn this on. That's a cloud. In my face. And then it turns to snow in my face. So this is pretty awesome, I love it. So all things being considered, would I recommend dry ice in these things to use? Not like this. I do have another idea that may work better, may work better with dry ice, that would be an indirect heat exchange. In other words, I would not be blowing the air right across the dry ice, so I would not be introducing all the CO2 into the air. It may also not produce as much moisture like the dry ice might actually work better if we don't cool the air down so far. Because if we don't cool the air down so far, then we're not taking all the BTU, so it'll stay solid longer, as well as not ice up as quickly. So I may revisit this in the future. But for now, I mean, come on. That's just pretty cool. Oh, now you can hear it hitting the chunks of ice inside the fan blades. So that's it for this installation, using dry ice inside this here ice chest air conditioner. There's no way you're gonna convince me that you don't like this video. Come on, this is pretty awesome. So make sure you hit the like button. And I mean, I guess if you didn't like it, you're, you can hit the dislike button too, but I think you liked it. At least I know I did. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure that bell icon is clicked because this is not the last episode in this series. We're gonna be taking these ideas into future installments with more ideas that may actually work a little better into the future. So until next time guys, I will catch you later and have a good night. Bye bye. All right, I can't resist. Let's see what happens when you dump water on 25 pounds of dry ice. I can't see my feet. <laughs>